Hi dears, today we can deal with the subject experimental techniques. We are now going through the module thin film techniques. In this we have discussed the introduction and the fabrication of thin films due to uh, via different methods. Today we can discuss the topic sputter deposition and an application such as glow discharge. Then sputter deposition. Sputter deposition is utilized for the fabricating thin films. It is based on the momentum transfer of atoms or ions or it is based on the kinetic ejection of atoms from the surface of a material by the bombardment with the energetic particles. The first technique which is utilizing sputter deposition is glow discharge sputtering which we can discuss today itself. Due to high contamination, this method is also known as dirty method. Using improved technology, high precision sputtering have low and high pressure sputtering. It is a powerful thin film deposition technique for research as well as industrial applications. Now, this is the basic concept of sputtering. When the surface of a target material is bombarded with the energetic ions, several type of interactions of ion with the surface can take place. The first one is the incident ions may reflect it or it is neutralized in the process. And the second one is due to the impact of incident ion, the target material ejects the secondary electron. The third one, the iron is trapped or buried in the target material and this is known as iron implantation. The impact of iron causes some structural rearrangements in the target material that is the fourth one. And the fifth one is the iron impact sets up a series of collision between the atoms of the target. This is all about the iron surface interaction. Here we can see the visual representation of ion surface interaction. When the ions are inserting on the surface having in, in, enough energies, some of the ions may be reflected or neutralized at the surface that is shown in the figure. And with uh, incident ion is having sufficient energy, then the surface will produce second eject secondary electrons. And the third one is some ions are trapped or buried in the target material. That's also happening on the surface. And due to the impact of incident ion, there causes some structural rearrangements in the target material. That is shown in the figure. And also it may cause a series of collisions between the atoms of the target. That is overall about the ion surface interaction due to the incident iron. The sputtering yield. In thin film production, the yield is the main factor which determines the efficiency. The sputtering yield is defined as the average number of atoms ejected from the target per incident ion. The minimum energy needed for each element to start sublimation is called the sputtering threshold. In case of sputtering yield, there are several parameters which may affect the yield that are following, which I am going to explain. That is the first parameter which affecting the yield is the sputtering yield which increases with the increasing energy of ions and their mass. This depends on the atomic weight of the target material. The sputtering threshold is different for different target materials. For the most of materials, the sputtering threshold is between 5 and 25 electron volt. So, the lower limit is decided by the energy needed for sublimation. 
Initially, the yield increases quadratically with the energy, then directly proportional to the energy, and after that, it reaches a saturation. If the energy is very high, the yield again decreases. This is because of the increase of penetration depth due to which this energy loss is high. The atoms which are ejected from the deep layers will not reach the surface. The saturation depends on the size of bombarding particles. For example, xenon plus ion, the saturation region is above 100 kilo electron volt. For argon ion, it is below 20 kilo electron volt. That is, this figure represents the variation of sputtering yield as a function of incident ion energy. That is, the yield is increases quadratically with energy first, then it is proportional to the energy and after that it reaches a saturation. Then when the energy is high enough, it st the yield starts to decrease. That is shown in the figure. Next, the sputtering yield is also depends on the angle between the normal to the target surface and the bombarding beam direction. The sputtering yield of copper and molybdenum as a function of bombarding energy of nitrogen ions at two angles is shown in the figure. That is mainly copper and molybdenum is plotted with respect to yield and energy. The uh, sputtering yield, the parameters affecting yield, the second one is the yield increases with the decreasing heat of vaporization. For example, copper target bombarded with the different type of ions are given in the table as an example. Third parameter is if the target is a single crystal, when yield increases, the transparency of the crystal decreases along with the direction of incident ion beam. The atoms sputtered from the crystal tend to be ejected predominantly along the directions of close packing, which have least transparency. The yield, the fourth one, the yield depends weakly on the target temperature at very high temperature. It shows a rapid increase due to thermal evaporation. For example, if the temperature is greater than 600 Celsius, degree Celsius for copper and gold. The fifth parameter is the bombardment of energetic ions. The atoms having considerable energies are ejected. That is the energy distribution of East Maxwellian below the peak, which is shown in the figure. Due to the increase in bombarding energy, the peak shifts slightly toward the higher energies. The long tail after the peak continues to increase in length and area with energy increasing. That is the fifth parameter which affects the yield, which is shown in the figure. Yield parameters affecting R, the sixth one is the ejected atoms are atoms or cluster of atoms. And the seventh one is the velocities of sputtered atoms are relatively higher than that of evaporated atoms. That is represented in the graph shown below. Next, we can discuss the topic glow discharge sputtering. This is one of the cheapest method for producing ions for sputtering. This method is based on the phenomena of glow discharge due to an applied electric field between two electrodes in a gas medium at low pressures. The characteristics of the diode structure is shown in the figure. 
that is there are tonsil discharge transitional range and glow discharge with normal cathode fall glow discharge with abnormal cathode fall and arc discharge this is the variation of voltage with respect to current glow discharge spectrum in this when the voltage reaches to minimum the gas breaks down to conduct the electricity then the glow discharge maintains at a constant voltage and is called the normal glow and there will be a region where both the voltage and current increase together is called the abnormal glow in normal glow the cathode is partially covered with a luminous layer and in normal and in abnormal glow the luminous layer covers the cathode completely that is called cathode glow the dark region between the cathode surface and the cathode glow which is only few millimeter that is shown in the figure as aston dark space that is between the cathode surface and cathode glow a well defined region near to the cathode with less luminosity is known as krug's dark space or cathode dark, dark region that is also represented in the figure a very bright glow region near to the cathode dark region is shown in the figure and is known as the negative glow this negative glow is followed by a not so well defined regions which is called faraday's dark space or and is followed by positive column and after that there will be a anode glow so we have discussed the normal glow which is a, uh, having a constant voltage itself and the region where both the voltage and current increase together is the abnormal glow and the normal glow the cathode is partially covered with a luminous layer but in case of abnormal glow the luminous layer completely covers the cathode that is known as cathode glow the region near to cathode to the less luminosity is krug's dark space before that there is an aston dark space and after the cathode dark region there is a negative glow which is followed by a faraday's dark space positive column and an anode glow then the cathode dark space is the most important region across which the most of applied voltage is dropped this is called cathode fall the electrons and ions created due to the breakdown are accelerated across this region that is the cathode dark space the electrons with the sufficient energy produce more ions by collision with the gas atoms in the negative glow and that then the ions having high energy strike with the cathode to produce sputtering and emit secondary electrons this process is continuous one and the glow persists the thickness d of the cathode dark space is inversely proportional to the pressure of the gas and this is known as the passion law for argon gas the p into d is approximately 0.3 torr cm the factors which influence the operation of the glow discharge when used as a technique for sputter deposition are pressure distribution of sputtered atoms current and voltage voltage dependence cathode contamination problem deposition control the activity i am giving to you is read out the these six parameters which influences or the factors which influences the operation of glow discharge and attach with your notes and submit at the earliest okay hope you all gone through the topic